and here we are. We are live. Hey, hey. So excited to have you, JJ. Uh, you, you know what? This is our second Valentine's together. It sure is. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even believe that. So wonderful. Thank you for being here. We get to share in this sacred time, this Valentine's Day mm -hmm. special love time. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what is, what's been going on for you uh, today for Valentine's? Well, you know, I was just thinking, um, well, in my house, it was sweet. My husband, um, my husband brought home uh, flowers. And um, so uh, my favorite color rose is orange. So he found the orange ones <laughs> for me. Um, but I was also thinking about um, the community and how much love and support there is. Um, like, I almost feel like this could be uh, the best um, Valentine's Day that I've had in a really long time, because usually it's a challenge for me um, emotionally. And this is the first one where it's been pretty balanced and smooth sailing. And um, having this beautiful community with support, um, just the support and love of everybody, um, the readers um, and the people that's in the, the, like the chat and whatnot. I'm just really happy that I met everybody. And yeah, uh, yeah it helps balance me out. Nice. Yeah, there, there definitely is a love in the community, within the community. Um, I feel that too. And such a support because sometimes people, I hear them say, well, I finally found my tribe, even though they may just know each other in the chat. So it's yes. great. Yes. And as we were starting, I just saw a flood of Valentine's red hearts with white in the middle, like a cascade coming in on us. And I just want everybody to feel that maybe even as we come together, just to feel if you can imagine in your mind's eye or maybe clairaudiently hearing the Valentine hearts or just knowing that they're coming in on you. And it's not just in your heart, but it's all over your shoulders, your back, your front, your feet. You're covered with love. Uh, today. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, and I am one of those. I don't have a Valentine in my life. I don't have a romantic partner. I have mm -hmm. two dogs, and two kids, and I have the earth and the trees and, and all that. And that seems just fine for me. I don't, yeah. I'm, you know, it's just fine for me this year. Usually I'm a little like, oh, you know, now I am taking <laughs> applications, by the way, you know, but, <laughs> but I, but I, but I don't have anybody who's, uh, you know, at my door bringing me flowers or anything like that. So, yeah, um, but it, it's fine. It's, this is, I'm, I'm kind of busy right now. So I'm glad I'm busy and I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And again, lots of love um, from uh, out of the physical and in the physical in this community for sure. Um, uh -huh. yeah, that, that holds me up too. Right. So right. Happy, and I love happy, happy Valentine's day, Kim. <laughs> Well, thank you. Happy Valentine's Day, JJ. So great. Yeah. And I love your sweatshirt with love. And I've got a little heart here. One yeah. of my, you know, from my children's childhood time uh, that I say for just this day, you know, they won't wear it anymore. Hmm. They used to wear it to school, but now, now I wear it. <laughs> and then I do have this little amethyst. I guess purple's the color of the day. Oh, you know? that's great. And then this nice, and then I have a green heart, Jasper. Ooh. Yeah. And then, you know, sometimes we need a little pick me up on essential oils, rose geranium. Nice. Now, you know, the thing nice. about it has roses in it and it has geranium. That in geranium is the economical version of roses, roses, the budget version version. Did you know really? that? No. Yeah, for the essential oil and what it does for you and everything. I'm just, you know. Yeah. Huh. So um, now I have a little message from the divine that I wrote a couple days ago. And um, there's a couple, I have different ones. I'm just going to maybe just read a little bit here and there. Um, and so this is from the divine. And even though I do feel Mother Mary right next to me, I say Mother Mary, you know, you know, St. Mary. Okay. We are all one. The oneness that lives within you like a miracle, is a miracle, the miracle of love. You are a miracle of life and love every day in every way. L live in the sacred moment, for this is the illusion of time. This moment is all that you that there is right now. 
the opportunity you have to create sacred moments within your life come from the portal of the heart and the energy field. This is changing more geometry, newer colors, and greater um, connections to love and share love and create miracles. It is now. Feel the now, the oneness you have created it. And then, um, hey, create a new landscape. This is another day. Create a new landscape of love, peace, and harmony forever. We and you are transistors, alchemists, and you have the power and abil ability to do this. This is how we create a new earth, habitable for all beings. Um, is it a state within you and it reaches to greater heights to our soul and beyond our wildest dreams? It starts within um Within, my dear children, we love you. We cherish you. You are divine. Uh, and I just want to say something about the new colors as we when is it because you mentioned the color orange, mm -hmm. and I see a new orange. I know people are talking about blue, but what I see is more like a mango. I see mango's orange, right? Mango, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a gosh, it's a combination of white and mango. And but it's shimmery and more translucent. And I've been seeing it in different places. Like I'm seeing it over the shoulders, over the head. I'm just seeing it in different places around us. And for me, orange is about new beginnings. Kind of and, like your picture in the corner. Oh. No, not oh. that, not behind you, but like um your your um branding up above my head. <laughs> right oh, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, there. right. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yes, yes, in the sky. Yeah. Yes, that that pink. It's a pink. Let, let me wear my orange glasses. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a pinkish orange. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly it. Uh, that's right. I didn't even put that together, but that is right. That's how I see it, and it is. I see it in different places, but I also see new turquoises coming and new. What else have I? Well, anyway, we just have some new colors coming. New colors and new chakras and uh, yeah, yep. I've got the new the new energy center chakra. They uh, Tuta told me about that, and I have heard other people talking about new light, um, like new light um, coming in. So this is I really um, I really enjoy like the validation of when I'll be listening to um, others, and I was like, oh my god, that person over there said that same thing on a different day, and. Uh, it uh, it really um, it it really means something when everybody's getting the same message. Um, they when you were reading that, um, let me see. Um, when you were reading those words, they they wanted because you used I think the word miracle. Um, yes. And what a, how like how many miracles had to come together for us to um, to be here. Uh, like, I'm not sure if that's an easy process, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. and, and it's kind of hard to remember that, um, that we're miracles because of, um, you know, all of the distractions that life is. And they also, um, I know we've been talking about community so far today, but they were also saying that, um, because you said a habitable, I believe habitable place for everyone, um, yeah. And that that brings community to me. They showed me like if I was living, you know, in this this house, like I would go to my neighbor to help. But then if I needed some extra help, um, you know, be ready to receive because that's hard for me to do is to like ask for help and receive help. Um, and I'm, I'm always one to give. <laughs> so it's like open up and be ready to receive. Um, when you need a little extra support is what they're saying. Yes. And it's, I think we have to, before we can receive, we have to kind of let go of some stuff. Yeah. Mm, I get the need to be right that we need to give. Like that feels more righteous, right? Oh, I'm, I'm righteous if I give, but honestly, yeah. Yeah. we can be just as righteous by receiving. Yeah. Like I have value when I help somebody. It's like my yeah. value is when I'm helpful yeah. to others. Yeah. 
but we can be helpful when we allow somebody else to give. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't feel good when I want to be helpful and the other person is like, no, <laughs> I'm like, but, right. but <laughs> yeah, I should remember that when people want to help. It has um, to be the but, balance, right? That figure. Yeah, the, the balance. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and one thing that Tuta was, um, was sharing with me before we started was that, um, you know, like grief, um, grieving is love. And we may not think of it um, when we're in the grief cycle or the grief process. But um, like if a, a situation has changed or someone has stepped out of the physical, um, there is a grieving process. And that is love because um, like, for instance, when somebody steps out of the physical that you're close with, it's like they they're worth it. They're worth this time of grieving. Um, if you step out of a job, but you really loved it, there's a grieving process because it was worth it. Um, it has that value in, in your heart space. And if it's not there or is there in a different way, um, grieving is also um, a valid feeling on Valentine's Day because people were worth it and we're worth it is what they were saying. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not to be ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's normal. And of course, it's actually really valued because if you think about other cultures around the universe that mm -hmm. may not have a grief, maybe they don't, they don't have that gift of grief in their awareness. Hmm. You know, maybe they're not so emotional. Yeah. Because they do things from maybe a 7D layer or something. Mm -hmm. And so, wow, what a gift that is. Even though it's a hardship to feel the grief, I think even one of the questions today is about, uh, you know, feeling pain. Uh, yeah, if it wasn't for that, it, we have to think of it as a gift because yeah. then we know we can turn it around and feel the opposite. And yeah. 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 To I'm feel anything at all is a gift. I mean, otherwise we'd be robots. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and, and not reachable emotionally. So it's like, if you're waiting for like this person to come into your life and they do, and if you're not reachable, um, then that doesn't quite uh, leave an opening um, for that to, to happen. Um, I'm oh. going to, I'm looking at the questions, like really, really good questions. Um, okay. Let me see which tuta wants to, um, I have a yes and no eye, so I'm just going through okay. the question. Um, okay, so Paula asks, hi, what can you tell me about a future love relationship coming? Thank you. That's the one they want to start with first. Huh. What can you tell me about a future love relationship coming? You know, the first thing I see you now with Paula is a cat. I don't know if she has a cat or not, um, but, but there's something about an animal. Let's just say an animal, like there's a love relationship with an animal. And that seems like first <laughs> and maybe foremost, yeah. but, um, I do feel, uh, I, I mean, you know how we have romance. We think of dinner and the nice dinner date. Mm -hmm. I see that. I see a dinner date. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Like I have the cutest, this is my, teenager's kitty cat mozzie but he's right look how cute he is yeah he's adorable oh he's, he's one i want to have romance with <laughs> yes oh my god and have that purr mm. <laughs> um what they were showing me um paula was um they showed me like um you leaning in um they're leaning in and there's like a handshake like a, a um like this is this is coming. Um, the handshake yep. has happened. You're leaning in. They're leaning in. Like if you think about body, um, how the body talks, that uh, you know that it's a mutual, um, a mutual. It's not like you're leaning in and, and they're off to the side. It's like you're both coming together, shaking hands, and um, you know meeting. So let me see if they have anything else to say. Um, it's pretty much like when we get ready for a, a date or how we imagine that we're getting ready for a date and the care that we give, um, 
and like the thought process that goes into it, they're saying that um, that's something you can do, Paula, um, before this love relationship um, appears, is to um, really open up and get ready um, for it, like prepare for it. So, so when this does happen, um, that you're, you know, you're you're ready to to lean into it. Uh huh. I see it happening. Yeah. You know, and it's funny as far as that, I see blueberries. So I don't know when blueberry season is, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's related to the season of blueberries. Season. So blueberries. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and so I don't think it's really that far. And I, I agree. I love this leaning into it. I actually see a ta dinner table with a mm -hmm. man and there, you know, I'm assuming it's a man, but it could be a woman, but it's yeah. just, uh, I see this, I see um, definitely something coming. Yeah, beautiful. Best of luck, Paula. <laughs> um, I'm going to save, Richie had a really good one. I'm going to save Richie's for the last part. Um, somebody says, happy Valentine's Day, Kim. Sending you so much love. That was for um, our mom, too. I think okay. I'm pronouncing that. Happy Valentine's um, Day. Woohoo. Yay. Um, Mary, um, uh, Mary Larson says, uh, asks, will love finally come to me? Oh, Mary Larson. Well, I mean, I have to say very first thing, Mary, is that you are loved already. I mean, it's not, it's not, <laughs> I know you're talking about a romance love, mm -hmm. yeah. but I feel what they're showing me first is about your so loved from spirit. I mean, it feels like from spirit to me. I feel like from grandmothers or, you know, sisters or I just that kind of a feeling that there's that like a whole group that mm -hmm. loves her from the other side. Feel that first. I just noticed that. Okay. I have something else, but you can, if you want to say. Well, following up with what you, you said, Kim, um, when you're talking about the love coming, um, it, it's like it comes from um, around the belly button area. So I'm thinking with a reference to the belly button, it's like an ancestral type thing or um, um, like in a mother way. I know that I love Mother Mary. You love Mother Mary. <laughs> so I'm not sure which mother this is. Um, but the like this feeling, um, this connection is in like the the belly area, that energy center for you. And I'm not sure if you are um, a nature lover, but the first thing that they showed me was you standing um, barefoot um, in the forest, and it's like the um, the tree energy, like the roots of the tree, which is also like an ancestral reference. Um, they they were, they love the feel of your feet um, on the ground and they're sending love as well. They're like, but we're already sending you love through your feet. <laughs> um, so Aww. I'm not sure if that was mother nature that they're referencing, but um, lots of, I, I really honor nature and um, I have a feeling you might be one that does that too. Mm, yeah. You know, say today in my meditation, I, I got a very strong impression that trees hold healing energy, you know, and, and it's not just what we think of grounding. It's more, it's deeper. Mm -hmm. They hold the wisdom of the stars and the earth together. Ooh. Yeah. 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 And there's something about the minerals that they, that they have uh, mm -hmm. or the, the elements that they carry, you know, within their trunks. Um, yeah. And even the flowers, when they're in bloom, there's even a different essence of healing, but it's a, it's a healing energy and we can, we can gather it. We can feel it if we either hold a stick or hold a tree or or just lean up against a tree, hug a tree. That kind of thing is gonna it's gonna come in to us for healing uh, and also for the wisdom of the. Really, it's because you know trees. I believe. I think. Hmm. Um, you know, they also live on other planets. It's not just here, but they hmm. seem to hold the wisdom of of interdimensional. Awareness. Um, but I also feel for her, as far as a romantic love, I feel like it starts with it as a friend. Mm. And maybe also this is part of that solar plexus area too. It just feels like a friend first 
and then and but it and it feels very like almost convenient in a way like convenient oh yeah we can do this together oh yeah you know like that so don't don't um let's see here you know sometimes we oh no that's not going to work on that but i feel like it might work even if you think it may not work does that make sense to you, JJ? I mean, am I off here? It really does. It really does. And as you're talking, they're like talking to me too. And they're like, yeah. And if it could be somebody who really values the soil and the dirt. <laughs> so oh I'm not God. sure. Are you a gardener or if you like gardening? Um, uh -huh. it's, it's like I see that I, I don't even see you guys inside. I see you outside. Um, and just like having fun and being like young and um, involving like gardening or being outside in the, the soil. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love, I love trees. Um, I have a special relationship with them. Like when um, I had to do something really difficult and I had to, I had heart issues, but I also had to drive like my two young kids and a dog through a storm like across the United States to like, anyways, that was the main press, like the, the main part of it. But I had to keep stopping at every um, rest area I came to and I had to hang out with a tree. And then I was able to go further because the trees, they really do want to help us. And um, I can see you whispering to the tree like, this is who I'm looking for. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. Can you help me? Yeah, so trees are really special. And maybe we can all do that. Yeah. Go whisper. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it. And I'm, you know, I'm wondering about, is it an Archangel Samuel about love? I believe. And if that's not right, it, there's, there's an Archangel that is related to like this kind of a love. So maybe we, I, we could maybe look that up in a second. <laughs> mm. I forget who it is. I mean, we can all look it up, but I you know, they it. love, I'm not sure. I think you're a nature girl because they're even showing me like, um, they're like mud, like making something out of mud. Like <laughs> it's just the whole process of like, like taking something from the earth and making it like pottery of some sort, but this is like mud, like making a mud pie and having that inner child. Um, Ooh. Well, yeah, the, the, the healing with the minerals in the mud. I don't know. There's something about those minerals. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Fogo Pogo says, why is the heart chakra so easily closed up, walled up, detached when we experience trauma? And what can we do to help heal from this? And there's mm. a heart. Um, why, when our heart, heart chakra is opened, can it sometimes cause physical pain? Thank you for answering my questions. Ooh. So let's do the second question. When our heart, heart chakra is opened, um, why can it sometimes cause physical pain? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the heart chakra is one of the biggest. No, the solar plexus is the biggest chakra, but the heart is has the biggest electromagnetic radiation. Right. It's bigger than the brain as far as it's have it has has its own memory, you know, it has its own whole system. Is it's it's big, it's more powerful than the brain. So that's why we always talk about that heart chakra, right? Open, close, and it's it can feel, you know, it's sensitive. The brain isn't sensitive, the brain thinks. <laughs> yeah. You know? Even though yeah. we do have a lot of chakras, we have the third eye and the crown and the clear audience chakras, and we have the throat chakra all close to the brain, but it's that heart chakra that's the portal to other dimensions. Yeah. And so it's going to be more affected by our feelings. And there, I feel like I, I'm seeing doors. You know, we have a door. Sometimes we have to close part of it up. But there's always going to be some open, you know. You know, it's like we have a, a, even different sections. I don't know. I'm just getting that. Or windows maybe is a better thing. Even like stained glass windows, but they don't all look like multicolored to me. But, um, huh. Okay. I know I'm going on and on. I'm sorry. But I, <laughs> there's also a point of the heart chakra that is outside of the body 
that is about two to three feet away, that assemblage point, that is actually a soul's lens. It's like part of that window of the heart that gives that that directs us in our direct, you know, puts us in our direction. And when we've been heartbroken, energetically, that can kind of move into different places, shattered in a certain way. And, and so when we can heal it through certain ways, uh, different ways, I know shamanism, and, but also energy work, and bringing it in back into that spot, we can see clearly again. I don't know if I'm even answering the question, but yeah, maybe this that's is fascinating. I didn't know. I didn't know that about the heart space. Oh, okay. Well, the biggest thing to me is a, it's a portal to the soul. Hmm. Okay. So again, they're bringing in dirt and, um, and they're like, okay, so when we, when our, our heart space, uh, our energy center is open, um, they're like, it's kind of similar to <laughs> digging a hole. Um, like the, your, the ground is becoming open. Um, and sometimes like a tree root will be there and we don't know. And, um, we might nick it. Um, we might nick something that was unseen. Um, we might know that there's a possibility that there's something within us. Um, uh, but when we are opening, having an opening, there might be some, um, unseen things that get nicked, um, and it'll be sore for a little bit, but um, what they're saying is things heal better when the air can reach them, when things are more open. Um, um, it's like um, when it's open, it's almost like that's medicine, but they do understand that when things do get nicked um, or emerge, um, that sometimes those things can, um, those things can like pop up and maybe we're not expecting that particular thing um, to pop up. And they're saying that sometimes like the sudden exposure to this thing that emerges um, can be overwhelming, can have that feeling of pain and grief. Um, things that may not feel comfortable. And so they're saying that we're really good as humans, as um, like, <laughs> they're saying like, just put a napkin over it. It's like when you're a kid <laughs> and there's something you don't want to eat. And they're just like, just spit it out into the napkin and hide it for a little bit. <laughs> Um, so there is that um, option of it's not like we have to be open all the time. So when there's something sharp or something that's nicked that pop up when your heart is open, um, that there are ways to adjust. Um, oh, I love that. And I also think about the healing. So how do we heal these, these nicks, right? How do yeah. we heal? Hmm. Well, in gardening terms, <laughs> with gardening terms, if you if you put like a little bit, bit more um, dirt or soil on it, um, so it's really interesting with tuta and shamanism, the difference between soil and dirt. Um, like soil is something that's nutritious and something that grows. And dirt, um, it's really hard for things to grow in dirt. So it's almost like when those people <laughs> say like, Oh my God, I, uh, you know, I got a cut. And then somebody will say, just rub some dirt in it. Um, it's kind of like that. If you rub some dirt in it, um, then that won't continue to, to grow. And maybe it will turn the volume down. Um, because these memories will always be with us. It's not like these hurts didn't happen to us, but there is this like, distinction of being able to turn a volume down where yes, this happened, but we don't have to relive it um, emotionally at the full, full volume um, as when it happened. Yeah. 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 Um, I can think of, you know, a few things we can do for just healing, just like every day talking about it is one mm -hmm. yeah. because we, with, as we, or journaling, right. As we express it, we kind of help, relieve some of it mm -hmm. you know 
kind of help open it up and just like get rid of some of the the bad, you know, or the dark or the yeah. grief, the sadness. Um, and you can even imagine perhaps Archangel Raphael, who's the healer, coming in with their uh, green treasure chest and say, oh, can you please take this hurt from me and just store it for later or maybe just take it up to the light and be healed. So, I mean, that's yeah. one thing you could do too, have a whole visualization thing or writing or speaking or even, you know, I've heard of people like, you know, I've got this amethyst or rose quartz is a good one. You mm -hmm. put it in your hand. You know, our heart meridian goes from underneath the arm, uh, you know, all the way down on the elbow and off the little finger. That's where oh, the heart is. Really? It's a very yeah. power right here is a very powerful heart point, heart six. Like for blood pressure, it will help balance whether it's high or low. It's really like, oh, you got a person heart. Oh my gosh. But anyway, if you hold something here and it kind of like on this, on that meridian, you know, not too far from it. And you can just imagine from your heart going off into that crystal and letting the crystal help heal it. Hmm. That's, an, that's an something else. Uh, oh, and breathing colors, you know, because. We, well, we think of the heart as being the blue, I mean, not the blue, but the green or the pink normally. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be. Sometimes it can be orange or, or blue or, you know, we, it's not going to be, everybody's not going to be exactly the same. But if you can imagine a healing color coming into the heart and you can breathe it in, that pranic healing, whatever color comes to you, gold is a really good one for healing. Yeah. What about that new color you were talking about? Orangey pink. Yes. Yeah. I'm getting chills on that. Yes. Yeah. It's almost like, and excuse my like mechanic <laughs> reference. Yeah. It's like when our radiator, uh, radiator is leaking. Like you yeah. can actually put something into the radiator that goes all the way through it and block, you know, and clogs it up. So it's like, yes. um, and that's, that's kind of what they were showing me with this color, this new orange that's coming in is that, it does. It like comes in and it almost heals things as it's going through. Um, yes. Yes. I'm getting chills on that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Cool. And you're wearing those glasses too, that are actually very similar. Yeah. But it's good. Maybe if we can empty it first, give it to somebody. Well, your mm -hmm. angels, your guides, your ancestors, whoever you want to give it to a tree, give it to the a rock, whatever. And then bring in that pranic breathing, you know, Breathe, breathe it in. Oh, I love it. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Good. Good stuff. Um, so the first part of the question was, um, why is the heart chakra so easily closed up, walled up, or detached when we experience trauma? And what can we do to help heal from this? Um, kind of answered answered that. Yeah. The healing part. Um, but I kind of feel like if... Um, you know, you see like a punch coming your way. What do you do to your gut? Um, you, you tighten it. Um, so it doesn't get hurt. Um, so that's why I'm thinking that it's easily closed or walled up. I think that's like a, um, something that we do that, um, is kind of like a survival thing. A blow yeah. to the heart does not feel good. Right, right. It's a survival thing. And yeah. But it is sensitive. The heart is sensitive. Again, mm -hmm. it's bigger. I mean, it's smarter than anything else in our body. Yeah. The, the, the radiation, the electromagnetic radiation from our heart. And, you know, they talk about the heart coherence, right? When you just breathe, you know, you've heard of the coherence factor, <laughs> you know. And we, we touch our heart because we can focus on our heart. And then that just helps calm everything, too. There's an app, by the way, uh, and I just applied, but I forget to use it. But it's, but there is an app on your phone, coherent about the coherence, mm -hmm. and you can meditate with people around the world, uh, and um, by, and then you can even put your finger. This is crazy. You can put your finger on your camera on your phone, and it will measure your heart coherence. Really? Yes, but you have to go on the app. I can probably look it up now and see. Yeah, um, it's with the it's with the heart math, heart math. It's located in California, and they're doing all the research on the on the coherence of the heart. And as more people meditate, and what happens in the world. Anyway, it's heart math. You can decide. It's free. I think it's free. I'm pretty sure it's free. I think you can donate if you want, but it's a free thing. And then you can meditate with other people. And at the same time you're meditating, 
I mean, even for five minutes, you just put your, they ask you, do you want to measure it on your phone camera? And you say yes. <laughs> and then, and then somehow it's amazing. Amazing. So how so cool. you measure your coherence. <laughs> wow. Because you want wow. to be incoherent. You want that, that breathe, the breath and the heart and that helps with healing. Hmm. Yeah, they're sharing all sorts of things. Like from my life, they're like, remember this and that? And it's like, okay, okay, shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Um, and Rosa, um, it says Ro Rosaire Hall. Um, yeah. It says happy Valentine's Day, Kim. Hi, happy Valentine's Day, Rosier. This is, this is a great follow one. This says, what is the purpose of pain? And can I ask for it to stop? And happy Valentine's Day, Kim. Oh, thank you. And who is that? There's a lot of love coming your way. Ooh. Okay, the purpose of pain. Yeah, the job. What job does pain have? You want to go first? Yeah, they're like, it's to, um, um, it's like they're playing the Rocky theme song. And it's like, it's like, um, you know, sometimes pain gives us strength. Um, it's like mm. strengthening. Um, and it hurts when it's happening. Just like when I, um, when, when someone like lifts weights or exercises and like the next day, it doesn't, it doesn't feel that good. Um, I think it's a strengthening. Um, but yeah, if we could just ask for those lessons to... <laughs> be um you know to just be really mindful of where we are in our life like could i know that pain asking for it to have grace and ease but if the lesson can come through with grace and ease um and just say i'm i you know i'm willing to to really heighten my listening to these lessons so maybe the pain doesn't have to be so strong maybe that i mean maybe that would work i like that yeah, yeah. Well, I also know, and this is so obvious, that, you know, if we don't know pain, we don't know um, peace. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't know uh, grief or sadness, then we don't know happiness, or we don't know love, you know, love and fear, you know, that I guess they say are, you know, opposite. Um, so I think that's part of it is that we have pain to discover, well, one, it gives us an opportunity say, hey, that's not me. I'm yeah. really this miracle of love. I'm really all love. And nothing's going to get me down, even though despite all this, and that's sometimes hard. But this is, again, we go back to the community to me, mm -hmm. you know, like, okay, remember, you're just love. You're all love. You're really not that. Mm -mm. I love the shadow. I love shadow so much. <laughs> I really do. I don't like it, um, you know, when I'm in the thick of it, um, but, and Tuta does too, Tuta loves some, some shadow and some chaos because that's really when we get to um, really meet parts of ourselves that uh, we wouldn't have met without it. Um, but chronic pain, uh, chronic pain Ooh. is at such a volume that you can't Ooh. hear other things. You can't hear the other parts of your body um, yeah. because Pain is a message and um, in searching for like the right answer, the right doctor, um, that can be really challenging. And I, I'm all for like asking for it to be turned down or, um, but sometimes it can be really complicated. Like after this, I'm going to take my teenager to a um, Chinese medicine, acupuncture, um, herbal medicine, because we keep going to doctors for migraines and uh, mm. we haven't really found anything that works. So it's like we're oh, complimenting, no. complimenting the medical um, doctors with the, um, you know, with the Chinese herbal medicine. So it's like, I guess, um, don't give up. I know being, being in pain and chronic pain is um, really zapping to the soul and, mm. uh, yeah. And I do hope you feel better. And I'm, I'm holding you in my heart space. Um, but always, always keep reaching out for like an answer. And um, yeah, it's not easy. Oh, my. And also not just physical pain, but it can be emotional pain or mental yeah. pain. 
Yeah. Whew, on all level or a spiritual pain. Mm -hmm. Wow. I know it's big when it, when it is chronic. I think the chronic thing is, is a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And that was, that was a question from, um, um, Ava or Avon leak. Um, okay. I hope I'm saying that right. And I'm holding you in my heart space and, um, you know, you know, one thing that really helped me um, was, and it was a simple thing. I thought it was going to be so complicated that I, I always put it up in front of me to do. And um, I took a Reiki class finally, and um, I was able to do uh, Reiki on myself and like open up. That was my gateway to, um, to really helping um, myself and my spiritual journey. So taking a Reiki class, um, really helped when I just thought of laying, you know, laying hands on my jaw. If I had a toothache, uh, that helped me. Yeah. So, you know, I would, yeah, I think Reiki is great, but any therapeutic touch just with mm -hmm. intention too, yeah. you know, because some people can may not be able to even leave the house to take a Reiki or, you know, or yeah. maybe they don't have the money. And yeah. so to just know we have healing in our hands, no matter whether we've had Reiki or, yeah. or jinjin jitsu or eating energy yeah. it doesn't matter right it's we all have healing hands and i think we forget this yeah most of us think well i gotta go see somebody else or yes 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 and you know rubbing your hands together stimulates yes. you and imagining you've got healing that even works even too and again i always go back to the colors breathing in the colors and the light and for your fingertips imagine that you've got the rays of light coming out wherever you've got could be mind, it could be heart, could be, yeah. Yeah, and you know, they are showing me as you're talking, um, they're showing me that how you can also bring in the, um, the coolness of, like, I see someone, it's not that they're necessarily laying in a calm body of water, it's almost as if, you know how mermaids are always like on mm -hmm. a rock um, in the water, uh, it's like you're being, you're being held, um, just a little bit in the water um, or maybe just above it. And I see that the, um, the lake has these, like it's um, the water laps the rock a little bit, which is nice and gentle, but it's nighttime and the darkness feels really good. And the coolness feels good. And it's a place where it's nice and quiet. Mm -hmm. It's dark, like the um, mm -hmm. animals, except, you know, for maybe an owl, <laughs> the animals <laughs> have uh, settled down. Um, so oh. if nighttime is your thing. Ooh, I like that. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful vision. Yeah. And even just thinking about the animals and spirit, the spirit animals as healers. Yeah. Yeah, one thing I know people have like, so snakes and spiders and whatnot can have um, <laughs> like a triggering effect. But when I was in um, a shaman school with Alberto Vialdo, he he was teaching us about the snake and when the snake comes in, it loves to like, it loves to like slowly come in and assess the situation and, um, you know, feel like the little vibrations, the little stories um, coming from the ground around us or the energy we're putting out, but it loves to come in and devour um, what needs to be um, let go or released. And um, I really loved that. Like at some points when I bring the snake in for myself, it's just like, there's like four or five of them. I'm like, come on, <laughs> come on, come in and devour what you need. Uh, what, wow. I need to what a great visualization, you know? Yeah. And I believe when, we, whatever we think it is. Yeah. It's like, we are, we are alchemists. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Any so, other questions? Yeah, yeah. We hope that's helpful for you. Um, okay, here's another love one. Um, um, Biba, Biba says, um, happy Valentine's Day, Kim. Um, do you see love coming towards me for a long-term relationship? Oh, I got a yes, I right away. Okay. Me too. I got it. I got a yes also. Yeah. And then whoever this is, is very funny. I feel, I feel there's a humor and, you know, like keep you in stitches kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it absolutely. Is it, is, it is really funny because they're like, just pretend you're a snake charmer, like the one that's playing, like that. <laughs> they're 
they're like, bring him in or bring her in. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's great. Yeah. Oh, I love that. You know, but the long-term relationship, um, I can see why uh, you would want that because, um, you know, there's consistency, uh, something to build on, you know, like having a good foundation and building on it. Um, mm. They are showing me carrying like buckets of water. And I'm like, is that like Jack and Jill went up the hill um, <laughs> to fetch a pail of water? Um, but they are showing me the bucket is full. Um, it's like so full that when we're walking that some of it um, spills out. Uh, let me see what they mean by that. It's so nice to have a full bucket, they say, than an empty bucket. But they're saying, um, they're saying uh, if you have a full bucket and you're going to the well, that doesn't really make any sense um, because you already have a full bucket. Um, so I feel like as far as receiving, um, or in this terms, like going to the well to fill up um, with this relationship, that you might have to uh, just just pay attention and launch an investigation about, um, you know, if you have a full bucket, what can shift or what can change so there's room for this long-term relationship. Mm. Yeah. I, you know, it's, when I see that bucket of water, I feel like there's a bunch of roses in it, or especially on the top layer. Yeah. And it's like she can easily, uh, if this is a lady, easily, um, it'll flow over to love and it will like find its way to the right place. Like you say with a snake charmer, but I feel like even with allowing the roses just to find, oh yeah, look who picked up the rose, you know? Um, yeah. Who, who followed the trail of the water, the love water? Yeah, because there is a trail, whether it's the flowers being, um, I see the flowers being picked up and put in the bucket, but with the water, it's like a trail left to find me. Yes. Yeah. So so it's a yes. I mean, the answer basically is yes. Yeah. yeah. It is true. I mean, it is. It's a beautiful image of the bucket with the water. It's a love water. Water yeah. love. Oh, and Viviani. Viviani says, happy St. Valentine's Day. May I have a message about love coming my way, please? Okay. Well, again, we know she's got love all over her, you know, from spirit, because she's such a beautiful person. Yeah. Um, you know, she's all over the place, right? She's giving love so much. Hmm. I see, yes, I see a yes on this. I saw I saw two people coming together, but it actually looked almost like two lion heads to me coming hmm. together, like nose to nose like this. Um, You're the one with the lions, right? The lion people. Yes, right? I love lions. I love lions. Yeah. I mean, I've got a lion picture right there. See, <laughs> yeah. I keep one right next to me at all times. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I see. But they look like female, or maybe one male, one female lion. Um, but I mean, and it's the sound of the voice. There's something about the voice that you're going to say, "Oh, it may not be like." Wow, look at that person. It's the voice. It's that vibration of this person that feels right. It's a vibrational match. That's what feels right. And I feel strength with this person too. Mm. Viviani, whoever it is you're going to meet. I don't know as far as timing. I'm not positive yet about that, but I, I do feel it's real. Yes. I mean, I, what do you think, JJ? They showed me something um, unique. They showed as soon as I read the question, um, I see, I see like love going um, as if Viviani, you're in a car and the windows are rolled up and you're going down the interstate, and it's almost like you see an like an exit of love, you know. But it's like <laughs> you might be going too fast forward to like um, 
really see it. It's almost like it comes up fast and it's like, it's almost like these opportunities have come up, but if we're, you know, going fast in one direction, um, you know, those signs might, might pop up and we might miss them and that's okay. Um, but they're like, what if we rolled your windows down in the car so you could um, feel the breeze? Because a lot of times when we feel the breeze in a car, like we might want to slow down um, so we don't miss um, that exit, the love exit. Um, and because if the wind is coming too fast through the window, that's uncomfortable. So if we roll the windows down, that might um, just remind us to go a little bit slower and uh yeah slowing down feels good yeah your highway, your highway of love <laughs> oh nice that's i love great. that that's a great and it, makes, a it makes sense that you said kim that um you know the vibration or the resonance of the frequency of the person coming in because um viviani's been in this community longer than i have and um and yeah. that you know the sharing that that they do that makes a lot of sense uh huh. And I feel don't overlook. I feel like it would just like going so fast on the freeway. You mm -hmm. might overlook it, Viviani, and also know your worth. I feel like you got to know your worth first, and then it's just going to land right in your lap. Mm -hmm. And remember, there's no perfect you or he or she. I mean, there's no perfect in this. Yeah. You know, that that brings us to our final question from Richie's Reach. Um, and if nobody here has heard of Richie's Reach, um, that's his that's his handle um, at Richie's Reach. And he's doing this really cool thing, Kim, um, where it's 30 days of celebrating you, which is perfect oh. for Valentine's Day. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it started yesterday. So he comes on each day um, and he tells a story of when he felt... Um, you know, like he was really standing in his power or when he was proud of himself. And then everybody shares in the community down below the, um, the oh. recording. And uh, it just really like um, builds. Like you're just, you read these these stories of these people in the community and you get to know them better, but you also get to like really help them celebrate their successes. So I, oh my I gosh. yeah, isn't that great? Um, but his question today says, is love only as strong or as powerful as hate or negativity is? Like, is there, is that a balance? Like, is it, you know, here's love and here's, you know, hate, are they the same? Um, and it says, if we lived in a world that had no hate, sorrow, or loneliness, would we know what love is? Are we really just seeking the light? <laughs> Well, I, I mean, do you want me to start or do you want to start? Yeah, go ahead. First, yes, we are seeking the light because it's a magnetic. There's more of a magnetic. It's it's rare, I think, uh, to be attracted to negative or dark. I mean, I know I think sometimes we can go off our path and maybe that we get sidetracked and for whatever reason, there's a magnetic pull that way. But most of the time people are magnetically pulled to light. You know, even when we had that near-death experience, right? We go to the light. There's, it's a pull. It's a magnet. It's and because it feels good. That's why it makes us feel good. Now, of course, if we, if there isn't, if you don't know the dark, how are you going to know the light? I mean, you know, again, you you don't know one without the other. And that's why on some cultures around the world, whether it's the Pleiades or wherever, and they live in, let's just say, um, higher or more harmonic um, civilization, they there's not much as much learning there unless they have the duality. So that's one of the reasons part of our soul comes here. You know, a fragment of us shows up here to get that duality. Yeah, agreed. That's exactly what they're showing me with the duality. Mm -hmm. Right, but it's I think it's a pull. The light is a bigger pull than the than the dark. Yeah. I mean, you just watch Star Wars. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I know that's silly to say, but um, but I will say I know somebody who um, I know somebody who channels Yeshua, um, yeah. and the way she explained it, she's a full body channel. Her name's Carissa Schumacher, um, one of my mentors, and she um, she says that when she first. Um, channeled him or when he, she continually channels him 
that coming back um, into her body afterwards um, is so different because there it's like feeling um, this huge amount of love when um, yes Yeshua is being channeled that like mm -hmm. the the capacity of love that can be felt out there is so different yeah. um, than what us as humans, uh, or some of some, maybe somebody can um, when they're channeling and be introduced to it or remember it. But um, that there's just this huge amount of uh, just warmth and love out there. And um, one thing that I came to realize is that when when we're not in the physical my my opinion is when we're not in the physical that um you know i'm not sure if there is like i think it energy just is energy it's almost like if you're swimming in the lake and you know there's one temperature you're swimming through and then there's like a colder patch for no reason you know like it just is uh -huh. what it is it's not good uh -huh. or bad but when we come to earth and we're born into these, like our soul comes in and embodies these, the human body, it's so lovely to feel in a different way um, where we actually get to um, hug and physically yeah. touch people. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's just something really beautiful about that thought process. But I would say, I would say when you ask the question, if we live in a world that had no hate, sorrow, or loneliness, um, I kind of feel like, um, of course, I don't remember, but <laughs> when we're not in the physical form, I kind of feel like that um, there's only like different temperatures of like, uh -huh. I kind of feel like it's mostly love. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so there is love when those things aren't present. Right. Right. Is my opinion on that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've heard this from, you know, other civilizations that they, you know, they live in that harmony, but they're, they admire us so much because we come in here for this duality that we've forgotten that yeah. we are really love. We are that miracle of love. I mean, this is it. We are miracles of love. And, and we've come here to experience and to be blessed with the <laughs> things that don't feel like love. So that we do know love. And yeah, it's wonderful. I mean, if you think about it, except for if it, you know, again, when we get to the chronic step, it's even more of a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. That was a perfect, um, these were all really great questions. And thank you for letting us tap into your energy. <laughs> it's always a pleasure, isn't it, Kim? When people um, yeah. really put yeah. themselves out there. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful. Right. Mm -hmm. I. And I just know, I, I feel like, um, you know, my team just wants to make sure everybody kn knows that they are loved, that they are truly loved um, beyond measure. And it truly is a love that has no beginning, no end. And it doesn't really even matter what we've done or accomplished or what we think we need to accomplish. We haven't accomplished yet. Or we thought we were going to do this. We thought we were going to be a zookeeper. And now we're just a plant keeper or whatever it is, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. That it's not it's not about that. It's the little things that we do that add up that show our kindness and how we share love. What we share love is how what how we're remembered and how we remember ourselves, right? On our soul level. What we see ourselves do from a soul level is, is our sharing of love, even in the smallest little ways. And I and I and I see candles and love and light all around us, and I see more like yellowish goldish candles i guess um maybe toward that mango color um candles that i just see lighting our, our pathway for us and that it's the pathways ahead are easier we don't have to try so hard they're right in front of us we just take one step at a time and just imagine one day at a time to enjoy i probably went on too long on that but that's my final my final thought do you have any th final thoughts jj um, just remembering, um, cause it doesn't always feel like we're miracles, um, oh, you know, yeah. because of the, um, stories that we came into, um, when we, you know, accepted this human challenge or human experience, um, just remember that it's, I, I really see you, um, and feel you in your humanness because it can be 
challenging, confusing, awesome. Uh, it can be all the different feelings. And, um, and again, one of the things I love about this community is that um, it's support. Um, and if somebody has extra, they give it. And if they need, um, they need some extra, then they can receive it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings to you. Now, I know you have a channel. And what's mm -hmm. your channel called? Will you tell everybody about it? Yeah, my channel is called Tuta Speaks because in my language, I, I got this whole language um, all at once. <laughs> I got to practice with it a couple of years. I'm still learning things about it. Um, it's been years. Came all at once when I was actually with Carissa Schumacher in Sedona. And um, the the language has healing properties. And so if you if you feel like you need a, an extra little lift, um, you can come in. It's called Tuta Speaks. Those are my my people, my team, and they change. Uh, come on in, and you're like an added ingredient into the the journey and the energy healing that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, you you're most welcome to join us over Aww. there. So, um, it's T U T A speaks Tuta. Nice. Okay. Thank you. And I think you have classes sometimes. Yeah. Um, well, every Monday we do um, Reiki and a journey. So that. It's so anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour where you can come in and you can um, share with what um, it really works on aches and pains. Okay. Um, it seems like. Okay. So, um, so if you're feeling like a lower back issue, neck issues, um, blocked heart issue, you bring those in and we all, this whole community comes together. Um, your people, my people, our people. And um, we, we try to lessen the volume of what's going on and maybe turn the volume up on some things that you want to Aww. hear more of. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And we talk about, um, there's also, so this will, um, this recording will be on my channel and so you can watch it cause these messages are for all of us. And then I also do light language, um, conversations with a fellow light language speaker, a different language. Um, her name's Karen, Starseed Awakening 1111, and uh, Gerald at Tarot Stash. That happens about every week. And then mini readings with my favorite, uh, my friend, uh, Debbie. This is her merch, Love Period. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Debbie at Freebird Spirit. Um, and uh, then we've got Lisa and sometimes Kevin. So, okay. uh, nice. things. so come on uh -huh. over. You're welcome. <laughs> nice. Okay, great. And then and I, uh, let's see what I do. I do healings every other Wednesday. We do on Zoom. So you come in, um, you just have to have, you don't have to have a video, but just, you know, it's free. Um, but, you know, if you want to speak, you can speak. You don't have to. Um, so we do that every other Wednesday. I do angel readings every other Thursday. I'm with Mel every other Wednesday as well. We just do various topics. And um, then I'm starting a mediumship class on Monday. So, oh, and thank then, God, that's my alarm. Then, it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually it's right at an hour. And uh, yeah, um, and to reach me, it's mediumkim.com. That's all right. So, anyway, thank you, JJ. We had a good yeah. time. I think I hope this helped some people. And yeah. uh, great to hear about what you're doing too. And um, thank yeah, you for thank you. Thank you, yeah, again. Thank you Kim. Happy Valentine's Day again. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. I'm going to. There we go.